Hey, listen, today I'm talking about cold brew, the simplest and easiest method for at home here on Bean Basics. Oh, hey there. Welcome to Bean Basics with Bob and Michelle. Welcome to our home and welcome to sunny Saugatuck. Hey, listen, today I'm talking about cold brew coffee at home, and I'm talking about the easiest method to remember. So cold brew is not a hot extraction of coffee. It is a cold extraction. So cold brew is not cold brew because it's poured over ice. Cold brew is cold brew because it's extracted using a cold method. And the recipe for this today is simple and easy. It's one part coffee and three parts water. And you can use any device to do this in. Now, I like to do it in one of these ball, mason ball canning jars. And I like to do it with this because it's got little hash marks on it that say one cup, two cup, three cup, four cup, right? And so I can actually use this as my measuring device. But you can make cold brew in almost anything, right? You could make it with um, just a bowl like this. We got some going here right now. You can strain it with a sieve. You'll see what I'm talking about later. You could make it just using a piece of Tupperware like this. And there's some fancy devices out there like this one here that comes with its own sieve. It looks like a ball jar, but it's not. Now I find this one doesn't work that well because it doesn't allow the water and the coffee to blend very well, but it looks easy. And then we could go back to our old friend, the French press. And I'll show you that in a minute again. But let's go ahead and make our cold brew. And we're just gonna get one of these mason jars and we're gonna measure out a cup of coffee. So let me find my one cup mark right here. And I'm just gonna pour some coffee in to that line. There you go, one cup. Get it in my grinder. Now I use a, a Baratza grinder. Uh, it's not real good for fine grind. Get all these beans out, come on there. It's not really good for a fine grind, but if we're talking about auto drip, and that's what we're talking about with this cold brew. I like to keep it simple. We don't have to worry about coarse or fine. This is simply auto drip. You can buy the coffee that we use, which is Bigby Best. You can buy a whole bean. I prefer a whole bean because it tastes a little bit better, just freshly ground. But you can also get Big B Best that's already ground, and by the way, it comes ground auto drip. So I would grind that up fresh using my Baratza Encore grinder. This thing costs about 370 bucks, so you might have to think twice about getting a grinder, but it works really well. I've already pre-ground some coffee, so you don't have to listen to me grind coffee. It's kind of boring. And I'm gonna go ahead and get a cup. Gotta find my cup mark again. There it is. The grounds right in here. And just a tish more. There we go. So one cup of coffee and three cups of water. So, one, two, and three. One cup of coffee, three cups of water. It doesn't get any simpler than that. It doesn't really matter what kind of container you're using, but this one works out real nice. Now you just seal it up. And you know what? I like to give it a good shake and get all those coffee grounds hydrated. And then what you do is you don't put it in the fridge. You leave it right out on the counter for 24 hours. If you put it in the fridge, it'll slow down the extraction process. If you keep it out on the counter, you'll get a full extraction 24 hours. So 24 hours from now, I can open this up and my cold brew will be ready. Now, a couple times between when I do this, I'm gonna go like this 
So if I put it together in the morning, sometime around noon, I'm gonna do this. Sometime around 6 p.m. I'm gonna do this. And then I'm gonna just let it sit on the counter for a long time. And the reason I'm gonna let it sit on the counter for a long time is I want those grounds to kind of go to the bottom of the jar. Well, that's how simple that is. So, 24 hours later, this one was done 24 hours ago, we have to strain this. And the easiest way is, if you've seen in earlier episodes, I love a Chemex for hot brew. Oops, I had some beans in there. But it also works great with this metal, metal filter to strain out the coffee. Smells real good. I mean, it doesn't smell like a hot extraction, but you get sort of floral tones and so on. And it's really a great taste. Now you can see this is just pouring right through. It's because it's not heavy on grounds because all my grounds are on the bottom. See that right there? All the grounds in the bottom. Now, I'm gonna to wanna to get this out too and let that strain through. There we go. We'll let that drip through. Now that won't give us too much more, but for that three cups of water that was in here, what it's gonna produce is about two cups of cold brew. Now the nice thing about using this jar is I can just take it right over to the sink and give it a quick rinse and get these grounds out. and store my cold brew right in it. Now you might need to sort of move these grounds around a little bit and get the final little bit of cold brew to come out. You can see it's still dripping through, kind of stir it around a bit, but you don't have to fuss with it too much. Now we're not gonna wait all day to do that. What we're gonna do is put that right here for right now. And what I'm gonna do is pour this cold brew right back in our jar. Now, one thing I like about the Chemex is it, it's also like a great natural decanter. So for any solids that still remain in, they're gonna settle on the bottom right here, especially if I pour slowly. Now, cold brew can be a little cloudy, and you can get rid of that cloudiness. I don't mind it but you can get rid of that cloudiness by straining this again through a cheesecloth and, and that sort of thing. I don't find that necessary. Now, if you can get the camera in there a little bit, you can see that that's pretty grainy on the bottom and that's what decanting does for you. All right. Now maybe in a minute or two, we'll add those last three drippings back in. And there we go. We have about two cups of cold brew ready to go. Now at this point, you definitely want to put it in your fridge. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it in my fridge right now. And I'm going to pull out a cold brew that I did yesterday. Because at this point, you definitely want it chilled. Now, let me go ahead and make a couple of drinks. Ugh. That lid can get on there tight. Now, you want to serve these in glass. I have two big B glasses here, and I gotta get some ice. So on one, I'm gonna fill with some ice. About two thirds full. I'm gonna add some cold brew up to about an inch and a half from the top. And then I like to sweeten this a little bit. And you can do that two ways. You can use a little simple syrup. You can get that in any uh, bar kind of place, grocery store, liquor section, or our friend Monin syrup. And this one happens to be vanilla. And that's a nice treat, a little vanilla and sugar at the same time. And I'm not gonna be fussy and measure. I'm just gonna pour in, oh, maybe half an ounce or so. And then I'm going to want to give it a little bit of a stir. Now, it's easier to use liquid sugar 
either in the moaning form or in the simple, simple syrup. Because regular sugar doesn't dissolve as easily. And then I can just pour a little half and half on top. And you can see what a pretty drink that makes. Now, if you're into sort of a plant-based kind of thing, you don't want dairy dairy, what you can do is use a little coconut milk. Now for coconut milk, I like to use a little crushed ice. And you guys see me use the crushed ice bag before. Let me get my scoop here. That doesn't look too crushed right there. But most of it's crushed. And here, again, about two thirds full of ice. But in this case, what we're going to do is put the coconut milk in first. Because actually the coffee is heavier than the coconut milk. So we're just going to saturate that crushed ice with coconut milk. And we're going to pour a whole brew right on top. Now I don't add any sugar to this because the coconut milk has sort of a natural sweetness to it that I kind of like. And that too makes for a very pretty drink. So those are some basic cold brew recipes. They're really easy to do. Remember, one part coffee, three parts water. You can do it in any container you like, including the French press. Now, one thing that's an advantage here is if you push this down, you can just pour it off into a jar. Of course, you still need a jar, right? And that's why I like doing everything right in one little jar. I will remind everybody, it's a good idea to save your grounds for the garden. And I can take these grounds right here, dump them in my little container, give it a good stir with my older grounds, and later I'll put this in the garden, not right next to the plants, ideally in your compost container, lots of nitrogen and carbon. All right, well next time on Bee Basics, we're gonna talk about sweet foam and we're gonna flavor it four different ways. But until that moment in time, know this, if you love the world, the world will love you right back. Hey, thanks for joining us. For future episodes, click the subscribe button. Bean Basics is brought to you by OneBigIslandInSpace.com with two Gs.